Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to Leading Air and Why. It's part two of Jesse's episode. Uh, but just quickly, I'm really excited to announce, you know, the new, you'll all right notice the new weekly structure that I've designed. Um, I really wanted to design that to better fit your busy lives and enhance the, you know, the viewing experience. Uh, because each guest episode will now be released um, in daily parts uh, from Monday to Friday, making it a little bit easier to catch up and revisit each insightful conversation that I have with everybody. Uh, but don't forget, uh, the full episodes are now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts from Monday morning, not Wednesday, at 5.30 a.m., which I think is around 8.30 p.m. Sunday evening. In America, you get it in the afternoon, so on that dog walk, put it on. Um, but yesterday, we revisited the incredible journey of our debut guest, Jake, um, who ran countless kilometers around Australia for breast cancer awareness. Tragically, though, Jess Ward... His wife, as you know, who you who you, who you met yesterday, um, was later diagnosed with this with the same disease. <sighs> you can't make this up, can you? Um, if you missed part one, though, please head back and check it out because today in part two, Jess continues to share her deep connection with Jake. After a long struggle to get pregnant, they finally received the news that they were hoping for. But stay tuned until the end of today's episode to hear the unbelievable twist in their journey. Uh, but keep joining us for the captivating and heartfelt episode of, of, of Jess and leading our own way, because I don't think you want to miss it. I'm never going to stop trying for something that I want so badly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you, think, do you think positivity played a role in it? Because obviously with people know now you've got two girls, you've got, and yeah. it's a beautiful way it happened and I'm sure we'll cover it, but do you think positivity played a role in it i think it definitely played a role in keeping me really like in a good place i think that mm -hmm. it would be really easy to to spiral down into into darker places when it feels like it, the world is crumbling around you and that you know that dream is just slipping away so yeah it would definitely be easy to to, to struggle to stay positive but i think staying positive helped helped me in my recovery it probably helped me in that journey and it definitely helped us to achieve what we wanted even even sooner than the doctors thought we could <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i'm glad you didn't have a bad class at school that you know gone oh you know what? i don't want kids anymore <laughs> <laughs> True, hey. no. yeah. there's, there's names that i wouldn't choose for my children but I've, well, I've been down there too. Yeah, been there I've been already. definitely down. That's why we. <laughs> yeah, that's why we didn't pick any, you know, standard names. <laughs> I know you've got to go for something different. I've never taught a Zadie. I've never taught. Actually, I've taught a Jovi, but you know, not many. <laughs> no. Yeah, one yep. one or two is okay, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And they're probably, they're probably the chances good. are they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Where do Very you good. think um, you wanting children so badly came from then? Mm, what what did you do growing up that wanted you to have children so yeah. badly? Yeah, I guess everyone's always got different reasons, um, and it might be that they all want all want kids, but they might have a different reason for it. Mine was was a fortunate mm -hmm. reason. I had an incredible upbringing, an amazing childhood, and that that perfect um, family and and marriage role model to me. So growing up, like mm -hmm. seeing my mum and dad be so happy, and you know, we were just a really tight, close family. So it was it was just something that I, I knew I wanted um, and I knew it was it was something that, yeah, that I'd always wanted, you know, from, from when you're a little girl and you're playing with your dolls and and mm. you just dream of being a mum. That, that was definitely, yeah. it started early for me. That's something I wanted and I knew I wanted that. What age did you think, picture yourself, you wanting children? I literally wanted twins and I still, still to this day, <laughs> even though I've got two under two, I would still happily have twins. It would oh be insane. But yeah, that's, that's something I'd always wanted and just hoped would happen. Like as long as I can remember Andy, honestly, like kindergarten. Yeah. Like primary wow. school. Yeah. I was naming my yeah. kids. <laughs> my daughter's crazy. doing that now. <laughs> there you go. She's going to, um, she's oh going to be a little mama. <laughs> Oh, she's yeah. definitely got that mother nature like her own mother. That's for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. That oh, nurturing my nature. The you best mum in the world. Honestly, my mum is incredible and I've always wanted to be half as good of a mum as her. So, yeah, it's definitely something that I saw and wanted. Yeah. What What values do you think your mum and dad um, unconsciously instilled into you then? Mm. 
definitely uh, like a loving nature. I think that they, they were both very loving and very affectionate and that, you know, there was never a day that we weren't told we were loved um, mm. and shown it. And so that's a big one. My dad's work ethic, I think he's a very hard, hard worker and he doesn't just take, uh, expect things to land in your lap. Like he'll go out and make them happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that they're, they're important qualities and yeah, probably just, just kindness. Like my mum's such a happy, happy and caring person that like everyone that knows, knows her just thinks she would never hurt a fly. So yeah, yeah I guess, did, I guess those qualities. Did your mum and dad have a good upbringing themselves? Yeah. Good question. Um, they were both, you know, one of, of, of five or six kids, mm. like they, they had siblings, they, they both had their parents happily married forever. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> I, I just, and the reason why I ask those questions, cause mm -hmm. I see patterns and even in my, uh, you know, what you don't see, I interview the other guests and that there's patterns that form in, in, yeah. in childhood trauma and where, you know, I've asked questions like, were you hugged as a child? I, I probably don't yeah. need to ask you that, you know, were you yeah. kissed or were you even told that you, you, they were sorry, you know, just saying sorry mm. to a child is so important, you know, and mm. that oh, does yeah. grow up with you. Um, even if you don't consciously know it at the time, um, you know, that's why I ask those, you know, very simple, easy, you, probably sometimes are silly questions, but they are important. And I see those yeah. pattern and, the, and, and you've just mentioned about your dad going out there, getting it. I can now see, why you ended up with somebody like Jake. Yeah, you're right. Like it's, you do you hear know? about people saying you go out to look for someone similar to your, to your dad or similar to your parents, yeah. not in the weird way, but hundred percent. You look, no, for no, of course, them. that's a whole different yeah. episode that Jess. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> they are the quality though. Like you say, there's, there's things that you admire yeah. in the people that you love, whether it is your parents or, or, a, or a sibling or a friend, like there's always yeah. someone that you, you put on a pedestal and you, you go out and you hope to find that in the person that you spend forever with. Yeah. Which I found great, uh, for sure. He's, he's amazing. <laughs> He said how old were you when you met Jake? Dad, <laughs> what was that? Sorry, he doesn't have a, any. He doesn't have a say on this episode. I'm afraid, Mr. Ward. <laughs> no, he's very um, much part of it. <laughs> um, how old were you when you met Jake? Then. Oh, when I met Jake, um, we were at like a what is it? Twenty? Is it twenty-eight Nova? The the clubs. The, <laughs> sounds really bad right now. We're at like a twenty-eight Nova. <laughs> And I was only like 25, <laughs> so <laughs> I was, you know, I was legally allowed in because I was over 18. But <laughs> yeah, I was yes. definitely um, one of the younger ones in in the scene. <laughs> and we in we the senior at club a, yeah, at the club. So it's the first and final time I went there. I tell you, <laughs> first time I snorted on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> You laugh because you know, Jake. So, yes. No, I think I was yeah, 25, yeah. yeah. And there's um, yeah. almost, you know, uh, five years difference between us. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so why, so the relationships between before you and Jake, why did they not work out? You were 25 years old. Um, mm. You've wanted a family. I'm I'm being stereotypical here by th say, thinking and saying that, well, you're 25. Why have you not settled down by now yet you've wanted a family so much and you've wanted yeah. married so much? And I would think that would happen earlier than 25. Again, yeah. I don't know if it's controversial to say that. I'm just stereotypically thinking out loud. Oh, no, you're now. right. Yeah. yeah. It's something that I assumed. Like that sounds really bad, but I definitely assumed it would it would be something that I had a lot younger. Like I thought, you know, when you're in high school, I couldn't wait to have a boyfriend because I couldn't wait to get married and I couldn't wait to have kids. So, of course, that was something that I thought I'd have kids by the time I'm 21, you know, just yeah. not because it would be an easy thing to achieve, but just because it's something that I'd always wanted. You assume yeah. you're going to make that happen early. But I guess yeah. um, I put a lot of time in my childhood and teen years into dance and dancing. And so that was sort of something that then led me to teaching. And obviously, uni took five years to finish my master's degree of, you know, teaching. And then, and then you start that journey and, and you date along the way and you don't always find the right person <laughs> straight away. So you think mm. you're just going to go out and, and meet that person, but you know, you have to sort of kiss a few frogs <laughs> yeah. before so, you find your friends. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I, I agree. And I've seen it, you know, I've seen it on, on my journey too, where 
you know, people, some people, not, mm. and I say people, not just girls and just not just guys, they're in love with the idea of being in a relationship, but they're not mm. in love with the person they're in a relationship yeah. with. Yes. And they fall into traps and they get into a, a marriage, they end up leaving because it, they mm. realise that through maturity and perspective and open-mindedness yeah. through growing older that it wasn't for them it's not the right person uh, or mm. they stick with them until they're older and they, they do go into a dark space themselves and they, they're not in love yeah. with the actual person do you know what i mean oh, were you ever in love with before yeah yeah you're in love with the idea of the person and you're in love with yeah. what you could have with that person but you you may not mm -hmm. be in love with the person you can't choose who you love really you can't so yeah i definitely no. had dated before jake and i'd had a few long-term relationships I never sort of um, quit early. I, I, I tried and tried and tried to make these relationships work because I wanted it so badly. I wanted what yeah. I thought I could have in that. Um, but, you know, I definitely took a bit of a risk to to leave those relationships because they weren't always bad. You know, I definitely no. had, had met some people that were, that were wonderful people and, you know, you hoped that you would have that with them, but it just didn't quite feel right or it was taking a long time to progress and then you just start to question it and so yeah I was at this point where I thought you know what I'm going to take a risk and it's a bit scary to leave a relationship that was nice um, but it wasn't 100% right it just didn't feel like my forever so yeah I, I definitely took a bit of leap, a leap of faith and and was single for a little while and I'd, I'd met Jake before I was single though, Andy, <laughs> we met at the club, but I was in a relationship and I, um, then had ended that relationship. And a few months later, Jake popped back into the scene with a little Facebook message and a little friend oh, request. Good old Facebook, eh? <laughs> he popped in their DM and <laughs> so, yeah, we, we got chatting and we went on a date and I kind of didn't, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't expect that to be, uh, my soulmate. Yeah. Like I honestly was like, you know, give this guy a go. He seems, he seems amazing. He seems interested and, you know, all these things I'd heard about him and I didn't know he was doing his big Gold Coast run for cancer. I didn't know all of that, but, you know, what I did know about him was lovely. And so, yeah, we went on a date and I honestly sounds so cringe, but I fell in love on the first date. <laughs> oh, that you know? is cringy, Jess. I know, not love it at first sight, not because he's not gorgeous. I think he's just perfect. But, but when I met yeah. him, it wasn't like it was love at first sight. It was just like, yeah, he's a real funny guy. He's really nice. But I was in a, in a relationship, so I told her I didn't had my blinkers on. Um, yeah. But then on that date, I was very much just like, oh, my gosh, this is so embarrassing. What are these feelings coming over me so soon? You know, this is what you laugh at your friends for saying. You don't fall in love on the first date. <laughs> And there we were, you know, leaving leaving our um our dinner date in Ambrosia restaurant in Berwick. <laughs> <laughs> and off off we went and we did not have a day that we didn't speak after that day. Like we honestly oh. then he told me about the run he was doing, you know, and that's even more amazing. You're like, Wow. So you're about to, to run from Queensland to, to Cranbourne, you know, for breast cancer. This mm. guy's just he's incredible. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so definitely Definitely fell in love with him. Because so, but he, at that point, he'd already done two runs. Mm. He had yet, yeah. yeah. Jake so had he, done all, a lot for cancer. Yeah, he'd he'd raised money from. Um, he did 110 kilometers in a day, and he'd also run from mm -hmm. Sydney to Cranbourne um, previously. Yeah. And then he planned this yeah. Gold Coast run, which was in the in the makings when we met. So he told me that he was going to do it. I'm like. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Sounds a bit <laughs> crazy. A bit crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but, you know, and, and, and you would think that because the breast cancer. Oh, sorry, I cut you off. Then sorry, it's a bit of a delay oh, yeah, there. Like, what do you say? Sorry, fifteen hundred kilometers. Like, how can you do that? You know, over a marathon a day. Mm. Like, he did sound crazy, but it sounded impressive, yeah. and you know, for such a good cause. So, yeah, that's where we were at when we first started dating. And cancer was wasn't prevalent in your life at this point. It, it wasn't. I don't know if that's the right word, actually, but it, it wasn't in your mind. Yeah. You didn't have that close connection to it. You didn't have that emotional connection to it. I'm assuming, because I'm assuming nobody in your family or your friends had got it. Maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe it's that super, I don't know, right? No, no. But were you um, affected my, by cancer at that point? My mum. By anybody else mom. outside? 
yeah, my mum's oh, mum had died of breast cancer. She passed her breast cancer. Oh. Um, so, but it wasn't necessarily in the family genetically. You know, it wasn't like yeah. we all thought it was really, really uh, close to home. Like, oh, obviously, that is close to home for my mum. But um, to me, like, she'd passed before I was born. So, yeah, I hadn't lost anyone like Jake had in, in my um, yeah. years where you're sort of aware. I guess I was a child yeah. when I lost grandparents and I didn't really realise what it, what it was. So, yeah, yeah you, you hear of cancer, but it, it's one of those things. It sounds horrible, but you honestly think that will never be me. Like you see mm. these people going through these big things and you think, oh, that would be awful. Oh, and I'm lucky that I don't have to do that. <laughs> like yeah. you truly don't, you don't think it'll happen. <laughs> you don't. And I, 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 I've never had anything majorly happen to me and my family in terms of illness, but my grand, mm. sorry, my, I did lose my grand, but I lost my grand, I would say through normal paths you know of just being getting older and and slowing yeah. down but my mum had breast cancer and, and when she told me i never yeah. it um shocking it, it was but i was here so I, I had to handle it differently i wasn't at home where i could just put my arms around her you know i mm, um, yeah right but when she, she's in england and you're you're here in she, australia yeah that's right yeah and you mm. know um of course it hit me and it hurt me of course oh. it did absolutely um I, but i don't know i think i went into automatic positive mode and just turned into it's going to be all right mum it's going to be okay yeah. you yeah. let's go let's get sorted let's go and get the treatment and my mum mm. was the most positive i'd ever uh, known her to be during her cancer scare and, and moments and treatment She's one of those people that you spoke about the people that um you know something big can change them it can it can change your mindset yeah Absolutely. Mm. So where we, so you were taking in all these stories uh, of Jake and, and you could probably feel how it affected him and, and, and why he was doing what he was doing. How did, where did, did your passion then turn towards his energy towards that race? Because obviously it's not obvious. I hate it when people say obviously it's not obvious, um, but I, I joined you on that and I could see the I love remember. and attention that you two w were going through. Um, how long, were you together when the run actually happened? Oh, yeah. A cra crazily short amount of time. Like, honestly, that first day he told me he was planning this run. Um, oh. And so, obviously, he was going to move to Canada, like I'd said, and that trip didn't work out. So he'd come back. He'd come back to Australia <laughs> and we'd gone on that date. He told me about his run that he was planning, this big charity run. And, and yeah, so that first year of dating – We'd, we'd only been together for a few months and already I jumped in there and tried to help if I could help him. I didn't want to take over because I thought, well, this is your thing. You know, I've, you've just met me. I don't really want to step on your toes. But I would um, organise things like his accommodation and I'd ring up hotels and follow the path that he mapped out that he was going to be running. And, you know, so I tried to sort of help and chip in because yeah. he, he was um, uh, contagious, you know, his – his enthusiasm for something so amazing, oh. you, you couldn't help but want to be involved. Mm. So yeah, we'd only been together not even a year when he when he'd finished that run. Actually, I lie. I think we'd been together. So a year. from the first date. <laughs> okay. Okay, so about a year. Oh yeah, give or take around a year because I felt like I'd known you yeah. not months by that point. Um, no. So he runs from Surface Paradise to Cranbourne, mm. which is probably an, an hour north of Melbourne-ish, give or take, would you say? Yeah, yeah, like it's a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour plane ride. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> you know, 50 kilometres of running a day for 30 yeah. days straight. That's what he did. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to know the integral details of that run for Jake, please go back and watch the episode, everybody, uh, because it, it, was an ins <laughs> it was an insane run, absolutely. Mm. In, in, uh, yeah. Um, it was insane what he did. Um, but mm. let's talk about the end of the run then, because yeah. this part is beautiful. If, but it's your story. You share it. Um, Andy. We go for <laughs> yeah. it. Well, I wasn't expecting what, what he did at the end of the run. You know, the, the run was for charity. And, and, of course, it was. That's what Jake had, um, you know, uh, designated all of that time to. Like, 100%, it was all for that, for the charity. And he'd raised 100000 yep um dollars like that's amazing stuff so he oh, gets to the finish it. line and i met up with him um when there was like a couple of days to go because i just started a new teaching job at the time so i couldn't 
I couldn't go on the entire month with him, but I went to the first day and then the last couple of days. Uh, we'd met up and I'd finished finished that last uh, part of the run with him, but he said, you go ahead, like, go ahead and watch me come through that finish line. Like, I want you to see that that look on my face of relief. And I was like, excellent. So I've run off ahead and I've seen this huge, you know, finish line party that he had waiting for him and celebrating. And, yeah, and he's run through the finish line and he's giving his little speech and thanking everybody for everything they've done, even though Jake was the man that did it all. Um, and, it, and then he got down on one knee <laughs> and he proposed to me <laughs> at the finish line, which was not what I expected. <laughs> you know, people sort of say, how did, <laughs> how did you not guess? That's such a great way to propose. I'm like, yeah, but my mind wasn't there. Like, I'm just thinking he did it. He finished his a crazy run that when we went on that first date, I thought was a little bit of a loopy idea. <laughs> He did it, <laughs> and here he is proposing. Like, oh, I was not expecting that. Yeah, oh, mm. it was just incredible. I, 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 I certainly didn't know either. And, and I thought, what yeah. Channel Seven News is there filming it too? Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know their so, cameras did it just before he proposed? Did you know that? <laughs> say that again. The cameras, the the news that was there, they were filming him, and they stopped yeah. filming just as he was about to propose. They didn't know either. <laughs> oh, they he should have prompted them. He'd have gone all over the world. Someone we know filmed it for us, eh? Sorry, hey, say Andy? that again, Jess. Lucky someone we know filmed it though. <laughs> it was you? That was me. <laughs> it was, even though you didn't expect oh, it either, did you? You didn't know. No. No, 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 I didn't know. No, I didn't. I, I genuinely didn't. No, no, I didn't know. But I, obviously, I'm going to film this. I mean, whenever am I going to see a person finish a run like that again in my I know, life? Right? You know? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm filming his speech. I'm filming him when he comes in, of course. Like, yeah. we've got friends from England there as well. And oh, um, yeah. It was a great moment. Hey, yeah. Great, yeah. beautiful moment. The celebration of, you know, raising money and awareness for breast mm. cancer, proposing yeah. to you. And that just adds more to this story and the the and the connection to it and the irony mm. to it doesn't it and oh yeah <laughs> I, th I think it didn't just touch all of your friends and family's hearts but then the journey you we've i think we said this in the pre-chat before we did this conversation last week it's like mm. a graph isn't it and everything's on a high and i and it's so so high the graph going up up and up but then it couldn't come tumbling down any further and deeper no. Right. Yeah. No, it definitely changed. <laughs> up, it up, up. Definitely changed. Yeah. 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 I, and, and 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 can I can't. I've got no words to be honest. Can you go into why and how that just went? Down? How it came crashing down. Yeah. Yeah. In a sense, I suppose we still we still very much stayed on that steady road together. You know, like we mm. didn't come. Of course. Uh, thankfully, crashing down in our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. No. But gee, no, no, I, know, I wasn't meaning it that way for no, sure. Oh, yeah. I know you didn't mean that. Absolutely, yeah. But it can, it can definitely, it can definitely change. We, we were like first date, fallen in love. He's finished his mm. run. He's proposed. You know, we're off on our honeymoon. We're about to start trying to start a family. Like what, what I've always wanted is about to come true, right? Yeah. Um, and I suppose the first sort of little bit that started to come down was, was that. You know, the babies just weren't, they weren't happening. And we're like, yeah. what, why is this not happening? Like everybody, everybody I know just gets married and starts starting a family. Um, so, you know, time, time passes and every day, I'm not going to lie, as, as happy as you can be, it's, it's something like that really takes its toll on your mental health. Like the infertility yeah. is a hard thing to go through. I swear every day felt like a week every week felt like a month because you know you can only try once a month to conceive every every cycle that a woman has is a chance for a baby right so every time you you have another cycle and you are not pregnant that that's a that's a blow it's a blow to the heart it's a blow to the mind yeah. and yeah that's hard to deal with so we were having month after month after month of of not falling pregnant so we started looking into why and we uh, yeah. we saw some doctors and they were like, you need to have some surgery to check out what's happening. So I did some keyhole surgery, had that done, and they were like, you are not ovulating. You're not releasing eggs. Um, this is why you're not conceiving. 
and we're like, oh, hooray, we've got the answer, right? It's going to be so easy now. That was our challenge in life. <laughs> yeah. Do Not you know quite. why you weren't releasing eggs, though? What, what, do we know why? That's a really good question, actually. Um, gosh, women's bodies are complicated. <laughs> There's so many, <laughs> so Not many. Not just the bodies, uh, right? <laughs> We're complicated <laughs> beings. <laughs> yeah, we won't go yes, there. True. Might get cancelled. <laughs> Another episode too. Yeah. So <laughs> they, they said they said that I was I was not ovulating. I was not releasing an egg. I suppose they don't always know why because there's so many possibilities. Um, but they did know that, uh, like my hormones might not have been quite right. You know, so they they got me onto this uh, tablet that was supposed to um sort of produce those estrogen and progesterone hormones that that will make you ovulate so i went on to a drug called clomid and i started taking that and it actually can have a little bit of a play on your mind too like that made me i'm not an angry person but it made me a little bit aggressive like i seriously was struggling at school and teaching kids i wasn't wow. aggressive i didn't do anything um crazy but no. No. I was frustrated at them, you know, little things yeah. that used to not annoy me oh, was making me have to breathe it out. And I was just like, oh, I hate this tablet. This is messing with my head. You know, the sooner we can get pregnant, the sooner I can stop taking these ridiculous tablets. So thankfully, um, after the second round on Clomid, we conceived. And I was like, yes, like that was the happiest day. You know, honestly, Jake proposing was up there. And then falling pregnant, that was huge. I was so excited yeah. to tell Jake. And I'd, I'd planned out this adorable little uh, note that was attached to Zeus's collar. Our dog Zeus is our absolute, you know, he's our son. He's our firstborn. <laughs> you Definitely get it. You've is, got yeah. beautiful flossy. Yeah. 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 And so, you know, I, I waited till Jake got home from work and Zeus greeted him with this note on his collar. And Jake's opened the note up. It says, I'm going to be a big brother. Jake just bursts into tears. He's like... No, no, because it's been like four years of trying. Um, oh, yeah, and was it that long? Yeah, yeah, we'd, we'd tried for, for for years, right? And then um, we finally got there. We finally were pregnant. We were back up on that high again, right? Yeah, so that's – I'm glad you stopped me on that graph then because, yeah, um, yeah these are the, 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 this it is a graph. It hasn't just tumbled down, has it? It's, it's definitely still yeah. up and down. Yeah, it's gone okay. back up again and then, you know, there's yeah. a steady struggle and then we've gone up and we're excited and we're pregnant. And then, you know, you go into that, that ultrasound to see your baby's heartbeat. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard. To, it's actually sometimes hard to relive these moments, isn't it? Um, yeah. And there's no heartbeat. Take right? So we've lost the baby. We've had a miscarriage. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.